We've been to so many places lately. What do you say we take a day off from adventuring and just find somewhere nice to relax? Hmm. Let Paimon think. Where are some nice places we could go? Oh, why don't we pay Cloud Retainer a visit at Mount Outsong? It's been a while since we last saw that illuminated bird. She's always the one popping up out of nowhere and scaring us half to death. So let's surprise her this time. Here we are, right outside her place. Do you still remember the first time we came here? We even brought offerings and everything. And when we told her that Rex Lapis had been assassinated, she immediately threatened to squash Liyue Harbor. Paimon thought she'd be impossible to get along with. But now that we've spent some more time together, she's really not like that at all. <laughs> we probably don't need to bring any offerings now that we've gotten to know her pretty well, right? Hmm. Still, Paimon's got some snacks around here somewhere, so if she really wants something, we can just use that. Huh? Traveler, did something catch your eye? Whoa. What a pretty lady. Is she also here to visit Cloud Retainer? Yeah, you're right. All it takes is one look and you can tell she's someone special. As expected of that bird lady, really. She must have a whole bunch of Adepti friends from all over the country. Okay, but if we're both friends of Cloud Retainer, then we're basically friends by association, right? Want to go up to her and say hello? Helping you make more connections is a part of Paimon's job as your reliable guide. Paimon's got this. <laughs> um, hello. Mm. Um, Paimon is Paimon, and this is the Traveler. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, Paimon doesn't think we've met, but we're also friends of Cloud Retainer. May we have the pleasure of learning your name, Madam Adeptus? You two... What is this tomfoolery? Has a shift in form so clouded your eyes that you no longer recognize one anymore? Wait. You're... Huh? You're the illuminated bird? But you look... human! How did that happen? Oh, donning human form is scarcely any test of one's abilities. As for your confusion, one merely had no reason to indulge such inclinations before. So, uh, you're indulging now because? Well, one has made plans to pay a visit to some disciples at Liyue Harbor. Taking on a human form for such a trip is simply a way to make matters less conspicuous. You? Worrying about keeping a low profile? You're the one who likes to pop up out of nowhere all over the place. In fact, Paimon can think of several examples. Like last year, when you suddenly appeared on the top of a roof without any warning. Or... <clears throat> hey, didn't we agree not to bring that up unless she asked? Oh, so you have taken care to follow the proper rules of etiquette after all. Most commendable. Um... Well, this is all Paimon's got. You don't mind, right? One has never found oneself lacking in basic comforts. On the contrary, it is the gesture that one values above all else. So long as you've shown proper respect and consideration, the quantity or quality of the gift is but a trivial matter. <sighs> that kind of makes Paimon feel a little guilty for trying to keep them for herself. Anyway, where were we before you reminded Paimon about the gifts? Ah, right. So by disciples, you must mean Ganyu and Shenha. It's also been a while since we last saw them. Maybe we can come too. One plan to extend the invitation even if you had not raised the matter yourself. Shenha and Ganyu should be quite pleased to see you again. However, one would first inquire as to the reason behind your visit here. You have cause to seek one's company? Yeah, we just found ourselves missing you and wanted to see how you were doing. We were hoping you'd tell us one of your stories. Who knew we'd run into your human form while we were at it? Hmm, is that so? 
If there are no urgent matters at hand, then let us make haste for Liyue Harbor. Ganyu is likely still working at Yue High Pavilion, so that shall be our first stop. Miss Sounds great! Then let's all go to Liyue Harbor! <sighs> Ganyu has been quite busy with work as of late. One can count on one tell in the number of times she returns to Mount Outsong each year. Shanoha has also secured employment recently. In her correspondence with me, she wrote that she shall have no need to return for the foreseeable future. Huh. Do they think one was so easily mollified? One shall investigate everything with one's own eyes and decide for oneself if their living conditions are satisfactory. We're almost at Weihai Pavilion. Uh, hey, do you think Ganyu will be shocked to see Cloud Retainer like this? Guess we have no idea if Shenha and Ganyu have ever seen her in this form before. Uh, uh wait, where did she go? Why are you just standing there, Cloud Retainer? Quietly now. One shall stay here. You two can go and meet with her. Uh, but why? Isn't it better if we all go together? Hmm. If one were to proudly proclaim one's presence, Ganyu would surely profess herself otherwise unoccupied and drop everything to attend to one's visit. One fears that would only result in her staying up all night to make up for lost time. One does not wish to trouble her. Conversing vicariously via you two shall suffice. Do remember to inquire as to her recent well-being. Again, do not mention one's presence here. Fair enough. Makes sense. All right, then. We'll just pass on your regards and... Cloud Retainer? Oh. Oh. Busted. Is that lady someone you know, Ms. Ganyu? She is indeed. I'm sorry, Huixin. But could we delay the upcoming meeting for a little bit? I believe my schedule today is quite full. Although... Perhaps I could move some work to later in the evening. Oh, not to worry, Miss Ganyu. I'll make the necessary arrangements right away. Thank you, Huixin. It's been a while, Ganyu. Greetings. What brings you here today? And Cloud Retainer, too. It's been quite some time since I last saw you in this form. You are quite mistaken. One is not acquainted with this cloud retainer of whom you speak. One is simply a mere mortal passerby. Huh? Seems she's not buying it. Ahem. <clears throat> that was but a simple test. One did not expect you to be able to recognize one so easily, especially after so many years of only seeing one's other form. But recognizing you is... Uh, my responsibility as your disciple. <laughs> An apt observation. One was simply passing by while attending to some important business. One thought it would only be fitting to pay you a visit while in the area. Wait, Paima wasn't aware of any important... Oh, uh... Cloud Retainer's right! We've still got something... Super important to do, so we can't stay here for too long today. <laughs> oh, is that so? But it's been so long since we last saw each other. Uh, one simply desired to see you and had no intention of interrupting your work. A quick conversation should suffice for today. A more involved reunion should wait until you find yourself less occupied. I understand. That should be fine. While one acknowledges the amount of work that you have to deal with every day, one must also remind you to rest. Though adepti blood flows through your veins, excessive exhaustion will still cause grave harm to your body. Ah, <sighs> it still makes one nostalgic to see you as you are now, respected and independent. When you were young, you oft begged one to cuddle you to sleep when you suffered from nightmares. C cloud Retainer, stop! Hmm, <laughs> if you insist. We are running short on time regardless, so one will refrain from going into each and every story. Why don't you continue your conversation? One shall simply stand by and listen. Wow, 
You've been to so many new places since the last time we spoke. If you ever need anything, please just come find me at Yue High Pavilion. Also, forgive me for my presumptuousness, Cloud Retainer, but if you plan to continue appearing in this form, don't you think it'd be helpful to adopt a human name? A human name? Huh. You raise a valid point. Considering the sheer extent of one's renown, Cloud Retainer is surely too recognizable as a name. You really think so? I, not that you're not famous or anything, but that famous? Huh. You presume to know the extent of one's illustrious achievements. One would hardly think such a thing to be possible. Huh. Nevertheless, Ganyu's advice cannot be ignored. From this point on, when in public occasions, be sure to refer to one as Shenyun. Shenyun? Ah, oh, I assume that's a reference to the full record of Pristine Pavilion. An adeptus of years past would rise with the clouds and rest with the moon. They were enlightened and wise, free and unfettered. The writer referenced Master's name to describe her carefree and spontaneous nature. Oh, that sounds super cool! Paimon feels like only the most powerful of Adepti could rise with the clouds and rest with the moon. Actually, those lines were originally written to describe Cloud Retainer herself. Huh? Wait, so you're really that powerful? And what of it? Did you truly take one to be nothing more than a bird of bigger than average size? Uh, not exactly. To be fair, Cloud Retainer rarely speaks of her past accomplishments. The tales of her past can only be found in ancient texts. It is said that once, a long, long time ago, there was a severe drought in Liyue. Left with no choice, many people left their homes while others spent day and night praying to the Adepti. Although I did not live through such tragedy, simply reading about it is enough to gain a visceral understanding of all the pain and desperation during that time. On top of the drought, a noxious gas also began to spread through the land. If not for Cloud Retainer's efforts, much of Liyue would be nothing more than a barren wasteland today. The books had this to say about what happened. Upon arrival, the Adeptus borrowed the wind to retain the clouds. Immediately, the clouds gathered together, and abundant rain burst forth from the heavens. Drought and plague were both driven away, and the people were saved. Wow, that's incredible! Mortal records add embellishments to dramatize past events. One did merely what one ought, and even if one had not interceded, the other adept I would surely have stepped in to help. Even so, you stopped an entire drought! Can you really control the weather like the book said? Oh, Paimon suddenly has a lot more respect for you. Uh, so it was Paimon's bad for calling you Illuminated Bird before. You're not too mad, are you? Oh, how laughable. A name is but a simple label we carry with us on our journey through the world. Why would one be offended by such a trivial matter? <laughs> That's a relief. In that case, Paima will continue to call you whatever feels right in the moment. Well, that is quite enough ancient history for now. Ganyu, have you had word from Shenhe? One has heard that she procured a job recently. Have you any thoughts on her workplace? And what, pray tell, of her monthly remuneration? Moreover, does she find herself overly inundated with work? Is she allowed time off during Lantern Rite? That is a lot of questions. There is no cause for concern, Cloud Retainer. I introduced Shenha to her employer personally. Wanmin Restaurant's business has been booming recently. So with Chef Mao being swamped with customers, and Shangling still off and out in search of new recipes, I introduced Shenha to staff the restaurant. I see. Most excellent, indeed. One has had the pleasure of being introduced to that family. Xiangling is kind and astute, while her father is loyal and reliable. 
one has no cause to believe that they will make Shenhe's work difficult. <sighs> now, it is almost time to partake in the vittles of noon. One shall visit Wanmin Restaurant in person and see how Shenhe is doing. Huh? But didn't you just say that you had something important to do? Uh, can that wait until after we've eaten? You may return to your work on you. One shall see to this matter on one's own. There will be many an occasion to dine together in the future. One is certain the opportunity shall present itself most readily. Of course, Cloud Retainer. Please take care. Traveler, Paimon, I'll see you some other time. See you around, Ganyu! Whew! Paimon was pretty quick on the uptake there, don't you think? As soon as you mentioned important business to attend to, Paimon realized that you were just looking to cut the conversation short and not take too much of Ganyu's time. Is Paimon right? No. In fact, it was not an excuse. One is indeed visiting Liyue Harbor for an important purpose. Wait, for real? The moment is not yet upon us. Still, the truth will be revealed to you in time. Huh. She really seems to be playing up the whole mysterious Adeptus thing right now. Is it because we just heard that cool story about her powers? You get what I'm saying, right? Yeah, how can I not? Not even fine food is enough to distract from the presence of a fine lady, eh? Oh, I'm far more interested in getting her details than ordering any dishes. Hey, how about you ask her? You do it! No, no, no. I think you should. Wait, she's coming. What can I get for you today? Uh, greetings, miss. Uh, I was just wondering uh, if you'd be willing to... Uh... What would you like to order? Uh, two servings of Mora meat to go. Uh, good chat. Bye. Shenha! Welcome. It's been a while. May I take your order? Don't welcome us as guests and greet us as old friends in the same line. It's weird. Mm-hmm. Oh, and this is? Uh, this is Miss Xinyun. Master? Huh? Huh. One does not recall ever revealing this form to you before. How were you able to ascertain one's true identity with such ease? I've trained and lived with Master for more than ten years. I would recognize you no matter what form you take. <gasps> you... Is something the matter, Master? Hardly. Hardly. One simply learned of your employment from your letter and came to check on your well-being. And check out the great food, too! Indeed. It's almost lunchtime. My apologies. I'm still on the clock and can't talk for very long. <laughs> well, if it isn't the Traveler and Paimon, are you here for Shenhe? The lunch rush isn't in yet, Shenhe. So I've got things covered for now. Go ahead, sit down and enjoy some time with your friends. I'll let you know if things pick up. Thank you, Chef Mao. Woohoo! <sighs> it is just as one expected. The owner of Wanmin Restaurant is indeed a most reasonable and accommodating human. Still, the work here entails dealing with quite a varied group of people. Has this been difficult for you, Shenhe? It's been manageable so far. I sometimes run into strange people, but I have figured out a way to deal with them. Seems like you've been making progress. So by dealing with them, you mean... First, I try to talk sense into them. If that doesn't work, I threaten them with violence. At this point, they usually decide they are in favor of a civil conversation. Oh, I... Uh... How should Paimon put this? Oh, a sensible plan. One is gladdened to see you integrate so well into human society. And you, Master? How have you been? Simply marvelous. Though Mount Outsong has scarcely enjoyed your presence recently, one has hardly found the pleasure of one's own company to be lacking. I see. Just as expected of Master. Hmm. 
Hmm. I have missed Master quite a bit, too. Even though work has been busy lately, I've already had a conversation with Chef Mao about taking some time off soon to visit Master. Oh, you did? <clears throat> Do make note of such matters in your letters in the future. There's hardly a need to keep one in suspense. Whoa, her mood shot up just like that. By the way, Master, since you are in Liyue Harbor, have you had the chance to visit Ganyu? Indeed. She is similarly preoccupied with her work. There was time only to exchange a few simple pleasantries. Ganyu told us the story of Cloud Retainer's name. It was amazing. We never knew how powerful she was before. I see. In that case, allow me to also share a story about Master's past. Oh? Is that a problem, Master? I believe this to be a good topic of conversation. No, not a problem. One was simply caught off guard. But no matter, please, proceed. One is most curious to see how much of one's own conversational prowess you possess. Master once participated in a race against Mooncarver. After Mooncarver lost, he insisted that Master's ability to fly gave her a natural edge in such a contest. In response, Master agreed to forego flying in return for being able to use one of her devices in the race. Mooncarver accepted, only to find Master with a brand new device on the day of the contest. Huh, what kind of device was it? It was a mechanical vehicle made out of iron. What was it called again? Oh, an electro-powered bicycle? Oh, you refer to the bicyclical Thunder Flash Mobile. One spent 49 days conceptualizing and crafting it. It need only be infused with adeptal energy, and it can cover thousands of miles in one day. Oh, it boggles the mind why Mooncarver ever supposed he might best me in a contest of locomotion. Though he sprinted with all his might, he could barely keep up. <sighs> Alas, the one flaw of my mechanism lay in its weakness against mountainous terrain. One was thwarted mere seconds from victory, when it was thrown off course and failed to make it across the final stretch. Truly a most unfortunate turn of events. Anyway, do go on, Shenhe. Master, that was the end of that story. Is that so? Huh. <sighs> With you gone... One has seldom felt the desire to call upon those old fossils for another contest. What is a race without spectators, after all? Have you been lonely, Master? Lonely? Huh. At one's age, entire human generations come and go in the blink of an eye. Even one's own self-directed musings can span several days and nights. Tis a most foreign sentiment. The mere mention of it is preposterous. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what is the reason for that look upon your face? It's nothing. It's just... <laughs> well, Paimon gained a lot of respect for you after listening to that story of you summoning the rain and everything. But all it took was a few words out of your mouth, and it's like you're back to being that illuminated bird again. Paimon's just a little bit confused. Which one of the two is the real cloud retainer? To me, they are both master. One is the master that's widely revered by the people, while the other is the master that I respect and adore. Huh. One finds oneself exalted yet again with sweet words of praise and flattery of a most extravagant nature. You chose to exalt one with your words, Yet you refuse to grace Mount Outsong with your presence for any extended period of time. One would almost question the sincerity of your estimations. This is not to say that your words paint an inaccurate picture. One has always lived by a single ideal. Eschew all action and abide by no rule. One does as one pleases and speaks as one pleases. Others may critique or praise as they see fit. Yet one places little weight in such judgments. She got, like, what, two sentences of flattery from her disciple? And it's as if her ego is about to burst. Do you have any empty tables? 
Hey there, could we get another fish stew? I'm hearing more guests come in. I should get back to work. All right, good luck with the lunchtime rush, huh? Mm-hmm. I'll try my best. So much yummy food! Paimon's gonna feast! One is fond of all kinds of delicacies and delights in a multitude of flavors. The dishes here demonstrate no shortage of culinary skill. Their unique flavor profile has left one more than satisfied. In fact, one has been struck by quite the fit of inspiration. One has already begun to conceptualize the next generation of supreme cuisine machines. Everything's so tasty. A bit too hot at times, but still super tasty. I'm sorry, miss, but our tables are full. Shall we try somewhere else, Granny? But it smells so delightful. Can we really not eat here? My poor legs can't go on for much longer. Well, you could always check with some of the other guests and see if anyone's happy to share a table. Okay, I I'll ask around. Excuse me, would you mind letting us share a table with you? There are no empty tables left, so... Ah, well, Paimon doesn't mind. What about you guys? Great! Thanks so much. My name is Shuyu, and this is my granny, Yuendai. Granny? Yep. Is there something wrong with that? No, no! Paimon's just a bit surprised. She looks so young. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people compliment Granny on her youthful looks, but she's actually much older than she appears. <sighs> Granny, why don't you take a seat? Come on, it's not polite to stare. Huh. Have we met before? No. Tis a faded meeting, then. Please, take a seat. What would you like to eat, Granny? I can order for you. I want... Braised earthworms. They always pop up out of the ground after a rainstorm. <sighs> no, no, not this again. Granny, there's no braised earthworms on the menu. Braised earthworms? Well, that sounds weird. Do people actually eat that? Right, that's what Paimon was thinking, too. I... need any help? Help? Oh, do you mean with Granny? Thanks, that's nice of you to offer. Granny has pretty bad dementia, so her memory's getting worse all the time. She's always saying things that sound kind of confusing. Actually, her memory's been bad ever since I was little. But it's gotten so bad lately that I even have to remind her who I am every morning. <sighs> they died young. It's just me and Granny now. Oh, um... Uh, but it's okay. Don't feel bad. Granny loves me a lot, and I love her a lot, too. Sure, it's hard at times, but you just gotta make the best of the life you've got. Wow. You're really tough for your age, kid. <laughs> You're too kind. And me? Oh, what about me? You're tough, too, Granny. Plus, you're really gentle, and you're always there for me. Yes, and it's hardly as if I forget everything. I still remember the important things. Um, uh, wait, what was that really important thing again? Ah, I remember now. It was a dream. I had a dream where everything was dark. Someone was standing in front of me. She told me to come and find her, and that once I'd found her, I would be free. Huh? That sounds super important. But how come you've never told me about it before? It was just a dream, so I forgot about it. But I'm in a good mood now, and somehow I remembered it again. <laughs> Ah, you know, I believe I've had this dream a great many times. But just how many times have I had it? Now that I do not remember. Wait, so you have a reoccurring dream where someone's talking to you? That sounds spooky. 
Oh, does that mean you're possessed? Unlikely. Her eyes are clear and her breathing remains calm and level. One sees no signs of possession. Are you sure? Who do you take me for? Is one not an adept? <laughs> Am I not an expert? Huh, you're right. Paimon almost forgot you're the expert. In that case, do you still remember what the person in your dreams looked like, Granny? Not anymore. Although, I have a sense that she looked rather like me. But not as I am now, my younger self. <laughs> a younger version of Granny? This is just getting weirder and weirder. What is going on here? As one said, fate must have brought us together. You may leave this situation to me. Are you sure? Um, so, what are your names? Paimon's Paimon. Just Shen Yun is fine. Thank you all so much for offering to help. But first, I'm sorry for asking, but, um, how do you want us to pay you back? Oh, we don't need any payment for this. Uh, thank you so much. You're welcome. Um, but Miss Shen Yun, what exactly can we do to help out this granny? All we have to go off is that dream. Where do we start? That is elementary. Since her dreams portray her younger self, then we shall retrace the steps of her youth. Once we have revisited those places, her memories will likely return. Hmm, sounds like a plan. So, Granny, do you remember which places you went to when you were young? Why, of course I do. The heavens above, the earth below, the wispy clouds, and the emerald mountain streams. Okay, taking that as a no. I might have an idea. Once, when I was really little, my dad told me that Granny used to be a martial artist heroine who saved loads of people from a disaster. If it's true, then maybe they wrote about it in the history books or something. A martial arts heroine? Hmm. Oh, Shincho knows tons about Liwa's chivalric traditions. If anyone knows about the heroes of the past, it's him. Let's go find him at the Feiyun Commerce Guild! Are you leaving already? But I'm still hungry. I'll go order some food, Granny. If there's nothing on the menu you especially want, I'll just get a few different things. It seems we must part ways for now. The Traveler and Paimon are bound for the Feiyun Commerce Guild, while you and I and Shuyu shall remain here and partake of their lunch. As for myself, I have matters to discuss with Street Word Rambler. Street Word Rambler? Oh, you mean Madame Ping! Precisely. Let us meet at Yujing Terrace once you are ready.